Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part five of War in Heaven, War on Earth. Um, the last one I did I thought was part five, but really it was part four. So this is actually going to be the part five. This is going to be on who are the Pharisees and who are the Sadducees. They were both Jews, denominations of Jews, just like you got Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians, you know, so they're just different denominations. They're basically Jews that have different beliefs, and we're going to cover what those are. Just like in, you've got uh, all these different Bible versions and Christian demon nominations, I mean denominations, uh, 666 different versions of Bibles and Christian de demon nominations, or denominations, I'm sorry. So, who are these people? Well, I would like to read something to you. Let's go to Luke chapter 7. Uh, let's go to verse 19, because I don't want to make this a huge long Bible study. Now, I believe right here, John's in prison, I believe. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? Now remember, John was to be the messenger in the wilderness preparing the way for the uh, the messenger of the Lord. You know, he was to be the messenger for the Lord. When the men were come unto him, they say, John, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou, art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, all right, so he just did a whole bunch of miracles, right? So he says, Jesus says, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. I did a, a Bible study on offended. You know, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. All right, so John's messengers were gone. They're going back to talk to John. And he, Jesus, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? You know, soft clothing? He says, Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled and live delicately are in the king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, listen carefully, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John 
the Baptist. Boy, is that a testimony or what? Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people had heard him and the publicans, uh, not republicans, publicans. Uh, the publicans were the tax collectors for Rome. Uh, think of the IRS agents today, right, if you live in America. And all the people had heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers, you know, we're talking to the doctors of the Bible law, that kind of a lawyer, not lawyers like today, but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment, his clothing, of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. You know, if John the Baptist was in a modern church, they would kick him out. I mean, you know, they'd be saying, oh, who is this guy? Dressed in camel's hair? He, he didn't even have the decency to wear a suit and a tie to come to church. He'd probably be, be kicked out. And yet Jesus, Jesus said that John the Baptist was the greatest of all the prophets born of women. Tell me I'm wrong. All right, verse 5. Matthew 3 and verse 5. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to them, O generation of vipers, do you know what a viper is? It's a snake, a very deadly poison, a uh, venomous snake. Uh, poison is taken internally. Venom is injected into the blood. There's a difference. People say, oh, snakes are poisonous. No, they're venomous. It, there's a difference. Um, oh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now, that's not a very nice thing to say to the Pharisees and Sadducees, now is it? No. Uh, the modern-day Pharisees, all the Christians, bless them. And we'll get to that. John says in verse 8, Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father." For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Therefore every key, tree, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 5. And then we're going to get into who are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
Verse 1, And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Now this is Jesus, talk, teaching. Verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, you know, if, in other words, if the salt isn't salty anymore, you know, it's lost its flavor. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. In other words, you throw it on the ground and you walk on it. That's how it's worthless, right? Verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set, set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Hmm. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. A jot and a tittle, that's like uh, dotting an I and crossing a T. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so... He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. But whosoever shall do and teach. Ah, you got to teach people and do. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. See, people that tell you to break that you could break the commandments... They're going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the commandments and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now listen to this. Verse 20. This is the punchline right here. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes, and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So if our righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you ain't getting into the kingdom. You ain't going to heaven. You're going to someplace else. Now, there's a lot of people in the well, I don't know about a lot, but there are some very famous people in the so-called Christian identity movement, and all they ever do is preach on what the Antichrists are doing. 
or the sin of Gog of Satan. That's that's seems like that's all they ever preach on. You know, <laughs> and it's like they should be teaching people to have righteousness and holiness. You know, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, what were the scribes? The scribes were the people that copied the scriptures. They didn't have printing presses back then. So if you wanted to copy the scriptures, you had to get some animal skin or parchment and have somebody copy the scriptures for you. Very labor intensive. And can you imagine, you know, the Bible is about three quarters of a million words. That's like 750,000 words. Can you imagine if you get some things wrong? Um, there was a printer in England that had the, um, they called it the adultery Bible because it said, thou shalt commit adultery on the Ten Commandments. Uh, so they called it the adultery Bible. The guy missed the word not. You know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, he left out one word, changed the meaning totally. Thou shalt commit adultery. So they called it the adultery Bible. Uh, the King of England fined the printer. So... What can I tell you? All right, so the greatest prophet born of women, John the Baptist, called the Pharisees and the Sadducees vipers. Jesus said that if our righteousness didn't exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, that we're not getting into the kingdom of heaven. So what's going on with these Pharisees and these Sadducees? What's, what's up with them? Well, let's go take a look. Now, remember something. Jesus had all kinds of miracles attributed to him. Matter of fact, when you read um, the Jewish Encyclopedia, they, call, they don't call him Jesus. They call him Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, which is uh, basically a, may his name be blotted out from under heaven. Even they admit that he performed many miracles. But, of course, they don't attribute the miracles to God the Father. They attribute the miracles to the other guy, if you catch my drift. We'll cover that a little later. But Jesus proved his ministry by the miracles. So let's go to Matthew chapter 9. And he, Jesus, entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. Oh yeah, this guy's committing blasphemy. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. That ye might know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth, forth from the, thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. Uh, Matthew, uh, in America, he'd be an IRS agent. He's, you know, collecting taxes. And he, Jesus, saith unto him, Matthew, 
And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans, uh, I'm sorry, many republicans uh, and sinners came to and sat down with him and his disciples. Oh, wait, I mean publicans. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your masters with republicans and sinners? Oh, the Pharisees must be a bunch of Democrats, right? That's a joke, people. Never mind. And when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So, you know, because tax collectors were notoriously, uh, they were like a step below uh, used car salesmen and uh, TV evangelists. So, you know, here it is, the, the Pharisees are, you know, complaining, what's this guy doing sitting with these people? Oh my, you know, they're bad. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You know, that's right. On the third day after Jesus was crucified, he rose from the, the dead. Remember the temple was, uh, veil of the temple was rent in twi uh, twain. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be sacrifices anymore. He wants mercy. Thank God for mercy, because I sure didn't deserve it. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, remember, Jesus said that except our righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, we ain't getting into the kingdom. Now, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw, and all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So basically, they're accusing him of being of the devil. I mean, you know. Verse 25, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Ah, kingdom. Satan has a kingdom, people. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So if you're not with Jesus, you're against him. Somebody tell that uh, to John Hagee for the Israelis, right? Wherefore I say unto you, listen carefully, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, 
it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now in Mark chapter 3, I don't know if this is exactly the same instance, but I believe that this explains the same event. Mark 3 verse 28. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, he hath an unclean spirit. They attributed the works of the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, they attributed those works to the, the devil. That is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And there is only one group of people in the world that teach this. And it's found in the um, Middle East. They're the largest recipient of foreign aid from the United States. Oh, yeah. And you wonder why you can't evangelize them. All right, let's go to Matthew 12, verse 31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasph blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Listen carefully. O generation of vipers. Now this is Jesus speaking. O generation of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? Now, who's Christ talking to here? He's not talking to the Roman soldiers. He's talking to the Pharisees. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. For by thy words shalt thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. We're going to cover that a little bit more. So by your words you're going to be justified, and by your words you could be condemned. Verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Now, you know, here it is. Jesus has been raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, healing the sick of the palsy, the lame, the crippled. And what do they say? Oh, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they can repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. All right, in Matthew 10, 32, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Luke 12, 8. Also I say unto you, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before men the angels of God. 
Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that, people, is the gospel. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 16. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came. So uh, in wrestling, this would be called tag team wrestling. You got the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Oh, they're ganging up on Jesus, right? The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Well, come on, guys. He, he's been showing you all these miracles, and you want to see another sign from heaven, huh? He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it shall be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. lowering. O ye hypocrites! Oh, Jesus is calling the Pharisees and the Sadducees hypocrites. Ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now remember in verse 1, the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted a, a sign from heaven from him. But Jesus says in verse 4, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when the, his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. When, which when Jesus perceived it, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet re understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Now remember, Jesus took a few loaves and fed thousands of people, people. Verse 10, neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. I mean, come on, people. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are not bake bakers. They're not selling bread in the bakery. I mean, come on. Verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. That's right. He told them to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, why would he say that? Well, let's take a look. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, who was Moses? Moses gave them the laws, the Ten Commandments, right? So when they say they're sitting in Moses' seat, they're, they're the judges of the law. Verse 3, All therefore, whatsoever they, they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and they do and do not. In other words, when they tell you to do something, go do it. But don't do like they say. But don't do after what they do. Uh, basically, he's going to say they, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. For they bind, he, uh, bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Oh yeah, they'll have you do all the work, but they won't even touch it with their little finger. But all their works, verse 5, 
but all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. People, Rabbi means master. And Jesus said, But be not ye called Rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Uh, verse 9, somebody send a memo to the Vatican. And call no man, and call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Now that's not talking about your dad here, okay? Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Listen carefully. Christ is talking to the Pharisees, which is a denomination of the Jews. Verse 13. But woe unto you, but woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer or allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. In other words, they're blocking the door. Verse 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. In other words, they're making when they get a somebody when they when they convert somebody, they're going to make them twice the child of hell than they are. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. In other words, if you swear by the gold in the temple, you got to keep your uh, your vow. But if you swear by the temple, that doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithes, tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Oh yeah, they'll, they're, they're, they're all about paying tithes. But when it comes to the important things, they neglect that. For ye pay, um, pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, ye, are, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Remember, Jesus said, except our righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, we wouldn't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 28, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Boy, they keep calling this same group of people serpents and vipers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. Who hangs out there? and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Boy, Jesus traces these people all the way back to Cain, doesn't he? Verse 36. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. How many times did he, Jesus call them hypocrites? Seven times. I wrote it down. <laughs> Seven times he called them hypocrites. Boy, that's a mouthful, huh? All right, let's go to Mark chapter 3, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they, who are they? Those probably the Pharisees and the Sadducees or whoever. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he, Jesus, saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days? or to do evil, to save life, or to kill. But they held their peace. And when he looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians. Uh, these are the uh, those that followed Herod, probably Herod's family too. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. So here it is, they're planning to kill Jesus. They want to kill him on the Sabbath day. They're making plans to kill him on the Sabbath day, but they're worried about him healing a man on the Sabbath day, but these hypocrites think it's okay to kill him, but God forbid he heals a man on the Sabbath day. Now that's the thinking of the serpent seed, this generation of vipers. And you remember Herod. Herod was the one that 
killed all the children in Bethlehem under, I think, what, two years old? Because he was trying to kill Christ the king. Yeah, that Herod. Uh, that was Herod's temple, by the way, that the Romans destroyed in 70 AD. He's the one that spent a lot of money, not because he wanted to honor God, but probably because he wanted to, to control. All right, well, let's find out what these doctrines are that... Uh, that Jesus warned about the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Let's find out what it is that they actually believed that Jesus didn't particularly care for. Turn to Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Now, there's nothing wrong with washing your hands, okay? Uh, before you, you know, didn't your mother always tell you to wash your hands? But I'm sure they had a certain ritual that they had to do. You know, it's not just washing their hands. Verse 3, for the Pharisees and all the Jews. Ah, see, for the, Phar for the Pharisees and all the Jews. See, the Bible tells you the Pharisees are Jews, for the Pharisees and all the Jews. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are both Jews. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, which means often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. The tradition of the elders. This tradition of the elders came from Babylon, people. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Remember Jesus said, Beware the doctrines of the scribes and the Pharisees. Oh, yeah. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 10. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curseth, curseth, curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. In other words, if you cursed your mother and your father, um, he, they're basically saying, Oh, well, that's a gift from the son to the parents. And the Bible says he should die. If you curse your mother and father, you should die. But the but the tradition of the elders say, oh no, he shall walk, he's gonna he should be made free. Verse 12 And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his mother father or his mother. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such things, and many such like things do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand, there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. In other words, eating bread with unwashed hands isn't going to defile you. It's the filth that comes out of your mouth. 
Do you confess Jesus before men? Uh, you know, that's with the mouth confession is made. That's that's what we're talking about. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. In other words, when you eat something, it goes in the belly, and then it comes out, well, you know, the toilet, right? And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. You know, in Luke 21, 1, in the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trode one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. You know, that's the thing. Uh, they didn't believe they had sown taken the traditions and the words of the rabbis and placed it over and above the words of God. I mean, it's just amazing. That's the doctrine of the Pharisees. And believe it or not, it exists today. Matter of fact, it's uh, very prevalent over in Jerusalem today. All right, let's take a look. John chapter 8. Oh, boy. Uh, Jesus, John chapter 8. Oh, boy. Verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and talked them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. A woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Okay, all right, you got the woman taken in adultery. Uh, was she committing adultery with herself, or was there a man with her? Uh, where's the man, guys? You know, uh, where's the guy? Okay, you, you got this woman. Where's the guy that was with her? Hmm. That was always a question I thought about. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And I, I, I kind of wonder if this is along the lines of what Jesus was writing in the sand. I don't know. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman? Where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus saith unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Ha. Huh. And I think you know what the next verse is. We've already read that today. Now, what was the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Well, Acts 23 and verse 8 tells you, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. See, the Sadducees were the temple... They were the ones that did the temple sacrifices, as I understand it. 
they were the ones that only only held the books of Moses, the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They were Exodus. Uh, they were experts in the book of Leviticus, the Levitical law of temple sacrifice. But the Pharisees believed the rest of the Old Testament, and they believed in a resurrection and angels, but the Sadducees did not. Now, in Luke 20 and verse 27, Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. Now, in Acts 5.17, Then the high priest rose up, now this is the high priest of the temple, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. Now, why were they filled with indignation? Because they were healing people. The disciples were healing people, and uh, so they were mad. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Or, uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand ye, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. So, and when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. And when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within." Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of themselves whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. See, these, these devils are always... They're afraid of the people because they know what they're doing is wrong. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? What name is that? It's not Yeshua HaMashiach. The name's Jesus. That you should not teach in this name. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Who? Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Now, who's, G who's, who's Peter talking to here? The Sadducees. Verse 31. Him hath God exalted with the right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, and we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Yeah, they're in the temple healing people, and they put them into prison. Wow. How do you like that? And there stood up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thudius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, almost four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But... If it be of God, 
ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. That's why they want us to call them Yeshua. Because Yeshua is not Jesus. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen to that. All blessings and praise and glory to God the Father and, and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and his, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in his precious name. Amen.